Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload is going to be about the ain't another long range. I feel, I feel like most people like that the most. The long range outlook, so I'll just do one once in a while. But um I haven't been active that lately. There's just been a lot of stuff going on, uh, the gardening season's getting active, and I'm a little bit more active on my second channel, if you did not know that, I have a second channel, Great Lakes Gardener, it's, the link is in the description box below, and consider, really consider subscribing, guys, uh, this channel, I've worked hard on, I made many videos already from last year, and I, I would really, really appreciate it if you want to go and check it out, I'm sorry if there's like weird noises right now. Mm, I'm trying to adjust the microphone here and uh, yeah, so go check that out subscribe to that channel But uh, don't worry. I still will be active on this uh, this channel except now everything is down There's views are down everything so uh, if you'd like to support my channel during all uh, these uh, low viewer times these just in general this crisis you could do that by uh, uh, becoming a patreon the, the link is in the description box below click on the link and it's gonna look something like this and you just click on become a patron and then uh, you you pay either two dollars ten dollars five dollars if you want to, and you get um, you get to support my channel or you could shop through the Amazon links which are also in the description box below so let's get into this um, the GFS is the active 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 pattern we are looking at several big large rainstorms <clears throat> and there will be quite a bit of warm and cold air at the same time, depending on where you live. So you can see, right now, cold air is sneaking down from Canada. And look, the 540 line is back here, and that's basically the 32 degree line. So um, there's been quite a bit of rain in the south, actually a lot of rain in the south. Arkansas, Texas, uh, Oklahoma, seeing quite a bit of snow uh, rain right now, including Louisiana. And this thing's gonna move up the east coast. Quite a big system, not gonna lie. Uh, gets pretty strong. You can see 987. But look at this, guys. This is just ridiculous. I mean, this is Sunday, April 28th. And um, this will actually be Saturday. But look, Sunday, Saturday to Sunday, we see snow again in the Midwest. Will this be exactly like it's showing right now? Probably not. This could either move to the south. I know, yes. So Chicago could still see snow. And it could move up to the north a little bit. So if you got your tomatoes planted in any of these areas, you know, the warm weather loving crops, you might want to hide them or shelter them somehow. I would not advise to plant them in the first place in April. That's like the worst time to plant them. Um, you don't plant in April in Chicago with tomatoes. That's just a big mistake. And you can see that there could be snow and the temperatures after this will be fairly chilly down into the 20s. So yeah, definitely chilly, definitely chilly, uh, way below average. So we see, uh, we've seen a couple of nice days, and you can see the 540 line right there dipping below, and we see another potential system right here producing quite a bit of rain, and I'll t explain everything in a minute, but uh, th why this setup is just so rainy, look at this, and why by Wednesday, um, so look at this, We're, uh, if you live in the Midwest, first storm right here tomorrow thursday and into saturday then a saturday night into sunday another system then monday t into tuesday another system then wednesday another system and then possibly a fourth system and then things quiet down possibly potentially but it remains uh, rather chilly so let's go to the two meter temperature anomalies which show us whether it's above or below average at what given time marked by the colors where it is red it is above average where it is blue it is below average and <clears throat> we the further we get on a blue spectrum so at, at the end it turns into like a like a pink um here it turns into like a gray almost color uh we see uh you know more above more above average and more below average so right now we're seeing warm mainly warm and then we see that uh, that system possibly making its way in uh, into the country with some snow again across the Midwest and this is impressive guys we don't often see such a below average of uh, anomalies during the summer usually it's more periodic but look at this it is a very broad area this is more of a late March I would say even mid March to early February pattern as to almost May so this is <laughs> I'm looking at the cold just sticks around and you know why the storms are going to be riding because look um, so in the south we see a lot of warm air and that is brought by the above average temperatures and you know why that is every time let me quickly draw this out every time we see a system uh, that's not it uh, every time we see a system that comes out uh, which again I like I demonstrated we saw four in the next 
week, they're gonna take a path like this. Hopefully you could see that. And I will try to increase the opacity on this. So they, they take the path like this and something long right there or, you know, a little bit maybe further north, a little bit further south. And the whole point is that while they are doing this, uh, they they basically bring up a lot of warm air. So let's say there's a track like this. Here, if the low is centered right there, the, the counterclockwise winds are bringing up tons of warm air. So 70s, 80s, 90s, all across this area. While on the back side, of course, the low spins counterclockwise counter as well. But um, this brings in the cold air and often... It's uh, the bigger the system is, the more air it could tap in because it has a wider reach. So what I mean by that is that uh, if a system is bigger, a bigger, stronger low, then it could, you know, wrap around and bring in that cold air from Wisconsin, from Canada. And that this is why it produces so much of this cold air. <coughs> I apologize for the sneeze, guys. But... At, the reason why the storms will be taking the track they are taking and not something else, not a different path, the reason for that is that's where the cold bear clinic zone is. So see how the two war air masses collided right here, the cold and the warm? You know, they change on a daily basis, but in general, it's around central Illinois, northern Missouri, central Kansas, and to Indiana and Ohio. And um, on the eastern side, and then we, you know, this then it breaks the pattern. But the bear clinic zone, let's look at a bit better example. Look at this the six to ten day outlook right here is neutral because the storms literally ride across this. There's a um, the storms take the path of least resistance. So when there's a high pressure here to the south and it's spinning up clockwise quite a bit of warm air, you know that there will be warm air and the storm will not be able to penetrate into the high pressures area because. The high pressure is strong, it's powerful, one system will sometimes be able to push it through, but if it has an easier path, like in between the two systems, that's where it will take the, its path, and that's where it will be riding along, producing tons of rain for the Midwest. Precipitation probability, again, look at this, above average, anywhere in the span of the uh, of the low the winter storm, you could call it, since it will be bringing some snow, and look at this. 8 to 14 day outlook, also, bear clinic zone, maybe it'll push it a little bit further to the north, but still, uh, the Midwest will be seeing quite a bit of rain with this. <clears throat> Not to mention that the South will be seeing quite a bit of severe weather as well. And in precipitation, probably look at this above average continuing. And this is extending into March 8th. So will the conditions be really cold? It depends on where you live. The further north you live, North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, Minnesota, those states will be seeing uh, colder air and below average and actually some snow. Yeah. <clears throat> And then, the further south you go, especially southeast, you know, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, Kentucky, Alabama, Mississippi, all those states will be under the gun for some severe weather and above average precipitation. So, uh, let's go back to the GFS model and quickly go to <clears throat> total accumulated precipitation. I focus on the Midwest, guys. Um, look how much this is. I mean, uh, just look at this insane amount. So the upper Midwest, the, the Midwest, and some of the Ohio Valley area, and maybe even parts of the South, where a couple of thunderstorms, if they trace over, you know, they train over the same area, could produce a lot of rain. So great amounts of rain. Not necessarily wanted by many because it's already been a really wet spring. So uh, this is basically it for today's video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. And I will catch you all guys in the next video. See ya. Bye.